knows? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is Thursday. It must be uh, time to chat with Tom. It's Thursdays with Thomas on idodjo.com, which is in fact the place where classic music happens. I'm being a little silly tonight because I've said that a couple of times today in interviews and talking about idodjo and some other things. And so, but I, you know how I like to say it, and it is really happening. But the one thing I really like about the Thursday evening conversation is is one I've really gotten to meet a lot of different colleagues that I probably never would have met um, other than this forum. And then sometimes I get to visit with old friends. And tonight's a really comfy December, kind of snowy across Central Europe. You're in Berlin, I'm in Zurich. Visit with an old friend, uh, a wonderful colleague. We haven't sung that much, but a couple of times. The one, the only, Eileen Perez. Welcome. How are you? Woohoo! Woohoo! Exciting! <laughs> I love that intro. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have, you know, it's it's fun. You know, we have we have quite a, a wonderful group of people from all over the world that are checking in on idodger.com. and they may not catch us live, but they but they'll come and and catch us on the rebound because everything we do in idodger live lives on the idodger live YouTube channel, and I think Vimeo as well. Um, you know, the Idajo, the Idajo orbit and radar is becoming really quite exciting. You have the, the mothership, which is the huge and uh, new oldest uh, and best, um, well, best, I don't know, but it's the oldest and um, deepest database for classical music in the streaming world. Um, and <clears throat> because of COVID last spring, we thought we would just jump up. I can't say we, because I've kind of been on the skirts of, of Idajo or on the outskirts of Idajo and now I'm in the middle of Idajo since it began and till Jan Sukovic, the founder and owner <clears throat> is a friend of mine and I think he's I just think he just really saw what was coming. I think streaming is a is a wonderful technological development. And the Idajo Live series was actually birthed. It's it's actually a COVID project. It was you know how how do we get artists and public together to have chats, keep them alive, keep the keep the spirits up, uh, not just um, you know more free music, but literally putting public with their favorite artists. And and I love doing that. Then of course the Global Concert Hall opened in, in June, which is a wonderful development where we what I call the third rail of a performance of performance because it's it's the digital world and the analog world at the same time. It's produced for both audiences at the same time. Uh, all part of the Global Concert Hall is is a, a live green room experience where people can write in and talk to you. And the whole thing about idonjo.com is just how how close how many middle how many middle layers can we get rid of between the music you want to hear the people you want to hear make it and the people that want to hear it and and I, I love being I love being part of that so today we're gonna to have a conversation as if we were kicking back with a glass of wine in my apartment which I wish we were but <laughs> with you know who knows thousand of our best friends <laughs> I love we're, it you're in Berlin right I am. I'm in Berlin. I was just in Munich uh, where we wrapped up our live stream of a new production of Falstaff. Mm. And that was a very <clears throat> new, uh, wild, deeply grueling, emotional, amazing ride, as all new productions are, but also with the way our uh, director, Matea Kolzhenik, um, the way she set the finale was masterful and a m big mirror to our time of, of how oh, wow. the arts are being handled. So I highly recommend everybody check out the Bayerische Staatsoper TV um, and have a look and have, have a wonderful journey with the new fall staff. We, um, I mean, it's a masterpiece. Uh, the ending just takes you to a new place. And uh, I think, it will also bring opera lovers um, a sense of resonating with all their artists all at once. Uh, as you're talking about Idajo, I think that, um, you know, part of what's been so <coughs> incredibly helpful is finding these ways to connect through media and to continue mm -hmm. this momentum like you mm -hmm. were mentioning. And we talk about discographies and we talk about artists and 
Um, you know, there's something very old school that is happening right now because the process is so, um, it's slowing down, but actually the classical musician, um, whether, you know, an instrumentalist or a vocalist, I mean, as you know, uh, the work is never done, you know, the, the right. same song. I've, I've been watching, you know, people who have lived with Beethoven's uh, piano concertos and symphonies and everything, um, discussing it after 40 years of, of living with these pieces. So our work is really never done. And it's so neat to find these ways to connect history, historical recordings to a fresh new artist and perspectives. And then um, it's, yeah, I, I, I'm I'm very much uh, feeling or <laughs> nourishing, hanging on to that, uh, to this to this energy that everyone is putting forth because we're all um, what, creativity needs to continue, and uh, finding ways to keep the music going to keep each other going. I mean, this is great. So I also am very happy to be here to connect with you on the iDojo platform. Um, it's, it's been a wild, uh, you know, how many months is it now since March? Uh, it's been a wild ride. Yeah. Um, we're not done. it seems <laughs> we're not done, but we're going, we're going, we're going. And, um, I think that for the younger people, uh, which is very, I know how gritty and grueling this position is at this time, please continue to, use this access to your live streams and to your um, taking lessons and preparing your roles and, and studying your music, please continue to be mm. inspired because the work will, when things open up, it will, your, all of your time will, will pay off. So that's my brief <laughs> message to thank you for having me here. And then to speak to the young people out there that are, um, that are trying to, to hang on. It's, um, it's, it's also, I mean, for me to sit here with you in this way, I mean, my mind is blown because I've been a fan of yours since, well, since I just, you know, watched you. Now don't don't make me feel old. I, I, I'm not going to say, <laughs> fine, fine, fine. But yeah, it's, yeah. Um, I've been a fan of yours. 35 years ago time. when you were in school. And you... <laughs> well, also, also what's, what's so incredible is, you know, you know you're, you're a very athletic man. And so also your approach to the care of the body and, and really regarding your health as a priority, um, not only was um, um, informative and inspiring for the American group of singers, um, but I just, I, I think that it, it's just, I, I mean, I could go on and on about you. I'll gush another time. We're not gonna but do that. We're gonna say, talk, let's talk about you. Say, Okay. Okay. But just to say, if, if we're talking about me, this is a, this is like, these are the moments where I'm pinching myself because, um, you know, to, to sit with you. Um, but yeah, it's, it's amazing. And it just shows, I hope it reflects to the young people today who are still doing their coursework that one day your path will cross your heroes and, and you're gonna get to work with each other and, and sit with each other. And the, the, the thread of humility, if you will, is, is the work, you know, and it's the, it's the love of this music. It's the love of artistry that continues to connect. So I'll leave it there. Thank <laughs> you. There. <laughs> you're a sweetheart. We, I think the first time we ever sang together was in Munich, wasn't it? Yes, it was, and uh, it was unfortunate for me because you and Andrea Traviata. took me out to dinner. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, we went out to dinner. That's right. We had a good time. But you, it was a wonderful Traviata. I remember coming back from rehearsal and Andrea said, who's, who's nice? I don't know, somebody in Perez. I mean, she's very good. I mean, my God, she's wonderful. And, and it just got, you know, better and better. It was really, it was fantastic. But the last time I saw you actually was at the Opera News Awards, if you can believe yeah. that. That was been, wow. what, a couple of years now. You know, yeah. where you won, you you won the one of the Opera News Awards, and that was a very moving, moving speech, and it was a, a, a very just award. I mean, it's, look, let's go. Let's go. First of all, I want to I want to talk just for a minute. You you mentioned the Munich Falstaff. What would you say? Because you, I haven't actually done a, a one of those, you know, only streaming productions. I've been doing some concerts and I'm online and all that. But 
in terms of like you from the get go, you knew your Falstaff, which is an extremely complicated score and, and a very theatrical opera. It's wonderful. You knew from the get go is going to be pretty much camera oriented. And your director, this this woman, was very sensitive to that as well. What? But you used the word grueling. On top of all the adjective, you snuck in grueling. And grueling yeah. means, oh my God, it was an awful lot of work. What's the difference, did you feel, between a normal production, whatever that is, and and this production? And what, what was it that was grueling? I think spacing is, I think stage deportment is one of the least, um, probably mm-hmm. the least mm-hmm. amount of training that we that we are able to comprehensively just address in a rehearsal setting beyond the musical score. I mean, it's already, many people may not know this, but when we arrive on day one, you are off book and you are basically straight into stage rehearsals. I'm not saying rehearsal of, of the, the movements of stage of staging and that skipping a heck of a lot of steps, which is a consensus of tempo, a consensus of musical ideas, uh, the profile of the uh, of the character. And so in a way, it's assumed that you have all that, you have all that wherewithal and you're just going to nail it. And so, you know, that's a taller. Yeah, you're, you're, that's what you're I call me. grueling. Yeah, but you're, you, you're hitting me where I live. I, I don't, I've, I've, I know exactly what you mean. I know exactly what you're describing. And, and it is kind of surprising that in a, in a musical art form <laughs> that the first couple of days of, you know, is, is not about the musical essence because quite, you know, quite frankly, especially Verdi, if, if it's, if it's not musically locked into why that musical language for that character, it doesn't really matter whether they go left or sit at the table or jump off the balcony. Um, mm-hmm. But, but, you know, so I know what you mean. You could, but, but on the other hand, opera houses are very busy, very complex schedules. And, you know, the, the producer never has enough time. I don't care if it's six weeks or six days or six hours, it's never enough time and fair yes. enough. Uh, and so there's always this hit, hit the road running <laughs> when you walk into an yes. opera house, right? Yes. And, and that is really a thrill <coughs> to, to just kind yeah. of walk in that calling and, and think um, one of that was a, a, you know, I learned that from uh, working with Joyce DiDonato in that, uh, the Jake Hagee opera, The Great Scholar. I want to, I want to talk because about that. I, because in the room, it was one of the first times I ever did a new opera, created a role, right? So and we're working, it's like top, you know, everyone, everyone's always top people, my gosh, all the time. Um, but, you know, and, and so I had that moment of panic where I think, I don't get it. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I mean. I, I know what I mean, but, I, and then walks, you know, here comes <laughs> Jake like. Must have, Jake must have loved that. Oh. Because Jake, Jake <laughs> loves singers. He loves sopranos. I'm, and I'm sure he just he just loved having that chalkboard that he could say, well, I think it's about this. And so, I mean, he's one of the most nice, the kindest people you've ever met, isn't he? He's like a flash of an angel. There are three people that I've met that have that kind of deportment. Um, a young Galliano Salas, actually the tenor who just sings Fenton in Falstaff, who's a uh, yeah, phenomenal, phenomenal tenor. When you hear that aria, oh my God, it's amazing. What's his name? What's and, his name again? Uh, Galliano Salas. Everybody watch that name. Yeah, Stay tuned. yeah, very, very good. And uh, Jake Hakey and Charles McKay. Oh, sure. They're just like, I don't yeah. know what's going yeah. on with their beings, but yeah. I feel like calm and peace and angelic presence i'm like who are you you're so interesting <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> stay around me please <laughs> okay let's let's uh let's go back let's bring up uh people who know your name and collect your records and follow you and all that might not know like me some of your some of your deep background can you give give us the you have a wonderful website which doesn't particularly surprise me <laughs> uh but <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> but actually as i got done reading your bio it said for the more extensive thing go to your management I thought, i'm not going to your management uh so <laughs> give us your give us your give us your wikipedia give us your your where where did you, where were you born where did, where, where did you grow up you got other sisters and think what was music in the house you know whatever you're comfortable telling us with with sort of Pre-Eileen. 
I would love to. And I think, you know, the Wikipedia might be accurate someday, but I think that the most essential, no, I, I don't, I'm just saying like a layout of that information. I mean, I was reading bios the other day. I thought, what does this say about anybody? I mean, even if you curate it, it's like, no, no, you missed it. You missed it. It's not the thing. I think the thing about <clears throat> maybe my journey is that I ride this very interesting sense of identity in music, in storytelling. So that mm, that mm, life or yeah. essence of being or action or where I feel home is truly probably this um, maybe born out of a sense of not fitting in when I was younger into American society because I my parents met each other in Chicago. Um, they are both from a small town outside of Guadalajara uh, in Mexico, the United States of Mexico. So um, I find and I found being the eldest of three that there were so uh, many lessons in education that I would be receiving through history lessons. And my mom would say, that can't be accurate because this is what happened. So she had her own, you know, she was very scholarly actually, um, but came to the States and met my father and then, you know, just continued to work and raise a beautiful family. And so in a way, I think that I'm born, I found my voice or a place to, to find a way to socialize with others and to, Mm -hmm. obviously I had this um, sense of storytelling and love of music. I, I would feel emotionally um, mm -hmm. immediately when I heard, when I heard music, a, a sense of emotion, a sense of story, a sense of wonder and curiosity. So that is where I think I'm still, um, that's, that's kind of the, inner losing that I had. Was, it, was, there, was there a lot of storytelling in, in your family? Did your dad tell yeah. stories? Your mom tell stories? You guys sing? Did, in, did you were, were you born in Chicago or were you born in, in Mexico? I was born in Chicago and oh, I right. was, I think my first three years until I was baptized, I was in Mexico. So, I mean, I, so again, like that didn't, mm, it's a very interesting <laughs> when you're trying to like establish <laughs> who you are yeah. it's very interesting because you're actually you're boarding you're bordering all of these new things and new yeah. ideas and new experiences and new um expectations are are just off everything is everything is new um uh and to be an artist is probably one of the most mexican things i could be but it just didn't feel because that way maybe because I wasn't in the country I didn't go to those schools I didn't socialize with mostly uh, Mexican people um I've, I've mostly been in you know the uh, the demographic of like um you know immigrants normal, families normal from Chicago. Italy Germany Poland yeah. Chinese uh, like they're they're just so We're, many you know Chicago is a big hub of uh, exactly of incredibly I mean, it's, it's incredibly diverse so um, I think that the, the, my grandmother on my father's side, her love of music and her, uh, I would call her anthem was Kukuru Kuku, which I've only sung in concert once, um, thanks to Guillermo Martinez at, in Puerto Rico, who invited me years ago and, and he had a mariachi come. So that was the most historical like moment for me <laughs> to embrace my heritage and culture um and to just have that kind of connection and my family was not there but it uh -huh. was then put on youtube and so they were able to see it which is i think is really great you, you my have two, father you, oh, sorry you have two younger brother your brother and sister or two younger sisters yeah. you yeah so we we had i would say in our family we did mm -hmm. have uh mm -hmm. i have uncles who were into music uh, rock bands and kind of like a ranchera music. So music and entertainment and storytelling was culturally in place. Pursuing it as a career, that's another story. <laughs> that's another wild no, I can, story. I can, are, yeah, you know. I can, yeah. But um, so, yeah, but we, one of, 
I guess the other important aspect is finding a path into music was not an obvious thing if it weren't for uh -huh. the great music education that was already in the school programs that, you know, in the districts that, that I lived in. So I just happened to have gone to, you know, one of met one of the best band teachers, you know, Mr. Janusek in junior high. And then after junior high and being involved in band and orchestra, Wait, I was band, in high school. Band, band, what did you play? Oh, I played the flute. Ah, you yeah. were a flautist. Yeah. Yeah. Which relates so well to the soprano voice, actually. Oh, gosh. Which yes. relates really well to singing. How long did you play? No, do you still play? Oh gosh, <clears throat> I, I pretend I play. No, I don't. I don't play anymore. These the fingers are much slower than they used to be. Um, <laughs> no, I, I. But I mean, the the reason I say that is because I think without music education, <clears throat> I really do wonder where I would be. What would I be doing? Maybe I would have found a path to music, but I don't know that I would have had the idea to pursue it you know, and, and, and seek out scholarship opportunities to go to school, which is a big deal because from my background, um, access is not easy for any American student actually to mm -hmm. go off to college and to be able to afford, you know, tuition. It's, it's quite a challenge for most people, most families. So um, <clears throat> that was a big deal did, that changed my life. What what so little Eileen playing the flute to young Eileen studying music? How what what's that path? <clears throat> where mm -hmm. did you go to school? Where where when did you leave Chicago? Or you know when you say, Mom, I really want to do this, and she said, Oh my God, my little baby. Oh man, oh. that the poor my poor parents still they thought I was like <laughs> gonna go to school and then like come back. They didn't think I would keep traveling. You know, it was like. <laughs> Once I was, you know, moved out at 17 to go live at IU's campus, I never went back for all I can, all I can tell you is, is remember that with your own kids, because, you know, you, we do it to our, uh, we do it to ours. And then, and then you have your own kids and grandkids and, you know, what's all this independence? Why can't we all just be a family together and stick around and go on vacation, <laughs> you know, and, you know, and I feel like something out of the National Lampoon, uh, you know, this series, but um, uh, vacation. Yes. But I mean, yeah, everybody has so to, true. everybody has to fly. It's hey, everybody has to fly. You have to go, you know, that's what yeah. we do. Yeah. So where yeah, did you go to, where did you go? Where did you decide? Where did you, what would you say you really started locking into the musical thing? Oh, it was a locked, it was locked. I mean, I, 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 yeah, always, I'm, yeah. yeah, there is no, uh, there is no other way forward. I mean, I think because of the way the music was approached when I was in my, you know, junior high days of like 11, 12 and 13 years old, there was an intensity and, and a thrill to, leading to playing performing and then and then when it became musical theater in high school and concerts we, we served the community um I went to Elk Grove High School and then I went to IU I mean IU is magnificent it has one of the most IU, IU for everybody that that's Indiana University right yeah in Bloomington and in Bloomington. it has the most astounding collection of recordings and oh original music i mean a you can great just school amazing and then with was, like was mark you know, was margaret harshaw there when you were there was she she was alive? not she uh, was, she i died. don't know if she i was there from 97 to 2001 so i think she might she have probably been alive, retired but, just yeah. before yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah 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 legendary voice teacher yeah oh yeah 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 my goodness right. I know she influenced so many great singers and teaching. Mm. It's so great. What? So how long? What, what? How long were you in Indiana? Is did things start happening in Indiana? Because I, th I have the feeling that it was AVA that kind of put you on the, on the as usual. I mean, uh, the American Vocal Arts Academy in Philadelphia, which has such you're a right. track record of great singers. You're right. You're right. It was there that that I think opera, you know, being an opera singer started to come together. I would right. say my formative time at IU was working with Martina Arroyo and her saying, ah. don't touch that role. First do leader, chanson, canciones. And then she 
Uh, also oh. a very important mm-hmm. aspect to her <clears throat> teaching was all of her students would participate or be encouraged to participate um, to sing on the uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, day of remembrance in January concert. So right, right. that was a big influence in my life. And I don't think if I would have launched into opera at that age, well, I would have missed all of the, I would have missed German for sure as a language. I would have just totally missed it. Um, and certainly <laughs> art song has enriched my life. And, and I, I, while I still haven't had long periods of time where I've been able to give recitals, it's still one of the, you know, dreams that I have because I love, I love the art song recital. I love well, it, it's clear. And, and and I love yeah. a little spoiler here, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have a, a little dip into the Idadro catalog. And there is a wonderful record that everybody's talking about called Poème d'un jour, which is a, an extremely beautiful record. I've been dropping the needle on it for the last couple of days. <clears throat> and enjoying it enormously. I only drop the needle. I mean that only casually because I'm so swamped that when I get a minute that I can listen to something, I've been listening to that. And it's really mm-hmm. beautiful. I mean, I, I'm crazy about melody, but I hadn't really I hadn't really locked in of what a no-brainer it is that you would sing the Defia and the Turina and the Ob- Ob- Obrado Soro. Is, what, is that what it's called? Yeah. Obradors. Obradors. Yeah, Obradors. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just, I mean, talk about hand and glove. It's fantastic. It's I'm so glad glad you love the repertoire a lot of a lot of our colleagues you know once the once the the opera bug hits uh that's it you know and i i i think that singing songs and opera are incredibly compatible especially the youth i think i think every young person should understand how close thought and and heart and voice need to be even though you're at some maximum place in opera, you're still, it's still about the resonation of the soul in a particular, in a particular context, you know, and, and, and to learn that in the early days in the, in the, in the more contained and gentle world, if you will, although it can be very complex of song, it just makes so much sense. I've always said every opera singer would be better if they sang song and sure to heaven, every song singer who has a career that would be better walking out on stage and and going into that macro environment it it is all singing i i I really think that the industry does a disservice to the art forms an art form of singing by compartmentalizing so much I, i just don't think it's healthy i don't think it makes any sense does make any sense to me but that's my two cents about song (laughs) <laughs> I love that. Well, thanks to your influence and your foundation, I think that more young singers are getting the kind of support and opportunities to go for it. I think that, um, you know, I've been asking for more concert work in my life for 10 years, and it's still yeah. kind of like the rare moment. And I think it really deserves its own sacred time. And you really have to find that time period that's not you know, with your debuting your new role and mm. important, you know, important moments in your opera life. So I think that my hope remains to keep those songs going. And I, I think as, as we continue along and as I go on my journey and my path, I will carve out more times. And one of the biggest issues about song is, you know, and about opera and about this time is uh, we need each other, you know, for art song to transmit, it's not only my own imagination, but goodness, I have to have my partner in crime, the yeah. pianist, the guitarist, yeah. the collaborator <clears throat> to storytell, to set up the atmosphere, to read each other's minds and souls at that level, to really just uh, release that gorgeous story into yeah. and let it go and uh when did you yeah. when do you what kind of, i'm kind of skipping around here more than more than usual let's say i mean i wanted to pick up i wanted to get from ava to it must have been a, an amazing moment to to be in the in the well not just the george london leo Riesnick, but you know the domingo operalia competition has really formed a lot of careers <clears throat> and it, i see lauren zachary foundation i i i won the zachary foundation or even oh, the second you. or first prize way back in the day 
uh, a new Lauren Zachary and 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 wow, Nedra cool. as well. Yeah. yeah, they were lovely, lovely people. And I, I also <laughs> knew I also Lucia Albanese and her Butterfly Award. I mean, my God, that was a one hour afternoon. Wow. She was so kind to young singers, and and yeah. I and I get that. You've mentioned young singers a couple of times, and I appreciate you mentioning my foundation. But for me, to me, not just this period, but has this period has this COVID crisis has brought it into stronger relief. And I was having a conversation this morning. There's nothing more important for us that we can. Uh, uh, is, is, to, is to create platform for young singers to sing. You cannot become a singer unless you sing. And quite frankly, you can't become a singer, not just sing, you need to sing and mess up. You gotta go, you gotta be able to do it and risk and come off and go, oh, that was really a bad idea <laughs> and, not, and not be punished for it. You know, yeah. uh, there's, just, there's just too much you know, vulture kind of the next voice. And then, and then it maybe doesn't, I just, I just want to help my young colleagues get their feet, find their way, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and I enjoy it. And now we both belong to the, uh, um, <laughs> embarrassing myself. I've got so many notes here. Uh, in Paris, Ooh. the ambassador, the Opera for Peace, the Opera for Peace program, yeah. which is absolutely wonderful. Have you been, have you had, have you, have you had some activities as an ambassador for Opera Peace? Oh, um, <clears throat> not quite yet, although I'm in dialogues <laughs> at the yeah. moment. Um, but well, she, all the COVID, COVID kind of settled the programs down but, because it's the same with me. She's okay. had several different interviews and, and where she's been able to dock into other programs and Opera for Peace is a wonderful program. But actually a produced Opera for Peace event I think she's she's uh, Julia well, has, had, has had to wait a little bit, but anyway, what? Yeah, and what, we will wait, and we will wait, and I think that uh, one of the strongest um, elements to this is again look at the the ambassadors to to know that every person on that list is willing to be contacted right. to speak on and to uh, act as a connector as well in this way. Right. is a fantastic step forward for the industry, for ourselves, for humanity, and for the community. And I think that existing and then as it gains energy and opportunities for us as we go along in these times, as we're, as everyone is adapting, um, you know, we're, we're going to see beautiful uh, creative ways that's way more intentional, I think, and focused so i right. like that and and it's certainly something that i want to keep being a part of well, well we'll talk more about about teaching and mentoring i want to go back to i mean you you won the 2012 richard tucker award which was you know a, a wonderful mm -hmm. i was involved <laughs> in that long way our paths have really crossed in so many ways and mm -hmm. i mean and and you put you were the first hispanic recipient of the award in in, in the 35 year history and that that does resonate, doesn't it? That feels like something to you. This is important to you, isn't it? Yes, it's, of course, it's, it's, it's so important. And I think that uh, what, what happens, I don't know if you felt this with, with the, uh, with the Metropolitan Opera competitions and, and mm. having, uh, having in a sense, in a major sense, a feeling of your country investing and yeah. sort of seeing you, seeing your talent, seeing um, sort of like as a family member or something, and then connecting those uh, artists in that way. Um, that, that's a major moment. And, and in that moment, I think that as, if I, I, as I have had, you know, looking back, to those times and even you know you mentioned the opera news award i mean i found it so um important to realize that as much as <laughs> i love that moment and the achievement element of it which is absolutely a, an mm. honor that beyond that and probably more centrally important it's never about us it's about this foundation, what they're doing, speaking on them, supporting them, showing activity, and again, making that 
importance of connecting to the next generation and, and like bringing people up in that way and behaving um, uh, more as a leader or taking on a certain Good responsibility. I that's <clears throat> what I think is like it's fantastic. More of the of the kernel of what those moments um, have have resonated with me um, because the other what I found when I was thinking um, in sort of like the achievement way is that it's very um, it's crazy and in, in a way um, there's something in me that feels like separated out and I don't I, I don't resonate there I need to be like and we're together and we're together here you know I, I like connecting and so um, that also has been able to inspire me to see like, okay, now with that, what am I saying? Now I'm representing this person and this foundation and, and this legacy and, and what are the qualities I'm bringing to, to this industry today and every day a little bit better. So, Do you, <clears throat> so one of our identification and you're in the perfect, you're in the perfect age because you're, I mean, you're in the middle of what you are and who and what you can do. And you've got your considerations about what's next and all of that, but you still see the generation in front of you and you're very respectful, but you also very much obviously can feel the eyes on you as a role model of the younger generation. And, and what you've just said, I think is, I think it's incredibly important. And I, I, that's, that's one of the reasons I started the foundation. It's one of the reasons why I'm so busy in it because I've, I've, I could feel in, in my generation that, that that was sort of falling apart, you know? And I've, I've always felt very strongly about what we call the collegium, you know, colleagues. We're in, 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 in this together and, and doing this together. But as I've gotten, you know, and for some time I've taught on the side and, 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 and I'm glad somebody challenged me to that. But it's more than just teaching. It, it is exactly what you said. It's, it's helping our younger colleagues, especially now. It's a tough time. I mean, I found myself, you know, mentoring right now, probably 20, 22 or three kids, you know, in, in various states. I say kids because I'm, you know, I get to say that's, that. That's but huge. I'm, but, that's I had to, but I had huge. to say to them, whatever you thought your life was going to be in December 19, Christmas 19, it's not that. And you have to, you have to one, stay alive. Two, you have to respect that everything can change. <clears throat> but this, you know, the, the, our, our younger colleagues, I think, have, are bearing a, even a more severe brunt of this unimaginable meltdown. I mean, yes, it's COVID, but quite frankly, it's, it's a big question about how we look at the arts. It's a big question about, especially in America, how the performing arts function. Uh, you know, that the food chain is in everybody's face. Uh, all of us have lost 80 to 100% of our catalog or of our, of our calendar for any particular time. Some of you have gotten back and quicker and some of them haven't. Um, and, and the kind of survival of the fittest mentality that Americans are so famous for that has encroached mm -hmm. itself on the arts and sort of, well, you're just going to have to get through this. And, you know, if I can ever open my doors again, I'd be glad to hire you. But, hey, tough luck, you know, pat on the shoulder. Good luck there. You know, here's a dime. Go get yourself in the soup line. Uh, it's I think it's been pretty. Have you have you felt that? Have you been aware of that? I don't want to I don't want to harangue. This isn't a political show, but. But as a as a practice as a as a busy artist as a traveling artist and sort of up and down because of COVID restrictions and where you can go and can't go, you're now in in Germany. You're stuck because of COVID. You can't fly here. You've been canceled there. But there's still this this overriding cloud on top of us. It says, yes, injuries are pro injuries are a problem. But are we losing people? Are we losing? Our public, are we losing people on a general level that says the arts are really important? <laughs> I think so. A lot of thoughts I don't there. Think Riff as I, you will. No, no, no. I, well, I think that COVID, you know, has definitely revealed so much. You know, oh, I remember word. everyone talking about 2020 being the time, the year we all see clearly. Well, I think we all see very clearly the fragility and the things that were undone and left undone are now, are they repairable? Like, you know, we don't really know. And the most important element, I think that I take from 
the lessons of the ages is where there's a willingness and when there is uh, a sense of togetherness, a sense of uh, yeah. everyone going towards something and uniting in some way for a cause and for a be going beyond our ourselves and right. finding out where the needs are and what, what what we know how to do, where's the need, what can we do to help, and all of those elements are very um primal but i think that the way i mean i think that the business model for the theaters has long needed we've long needed overhauls all, all good across for you. yeah good for all you. across i mean there's no way that a woman or a man in the arts can sustain or have a, a career in this beautiful art form by staying in one city over a period of time. I mean, it's possible, but it's still tough and not necessarily healthy. And I think that one of my wishes, I mean, this is totally, I'm gonna riff like on idealism because we're so far from everything anyway. So why not just put it out there what I think could be ideal. <laughs> I think that, you know, of course, pop culture feeds on, you know, negativity can just, it's so much easier to destroy something. It takes so much more care and effort to build and create something. It's so easy to knock someone down and be negative. It's so hard to see someone over a long right. range of time uh, develop, not even just succeed, develop. So it's just not like now and you're done in two years, you know? It's like, right. okay, let's see you over the next 25. I think you could try this, this, that, the other. Okay. In a nutshell, I just think that it would be really important that as we're seeing things clearly, that we all realize that there's missing training on leadership. There's missing training in terms of yeah. defining the rules of how we work and how we're going to address each other. And right. until we're ready to really get in there and like set up some rules, it's going to stay a little tricky and messy. And I don't think that's healthy, but hey, it's also life in the world and we can't fix everything. But I think that from hearing and seeing the many creative ways that these younger artists, I would say like, you know, maybe they're still in university, they are not having it. You know, they are speaking up to yeah. image issues. They're yeah. speaking up to diversity issues and they're pushing <clears throat> my brain and my mouth and my mind to make sure I, as I have interactions, remember to see that and remember to honor and cultivate a better culture in the way that I can. And so I think that that is one of the biggest, um, hopefully one of the most important takeaways that I know we can't all address and fix everything. And of course the arts I mean, one of the most amazing moments for our country are the Kennedy Center honors, you know, and, or the Grammy Awards. And I think that for years and years and decades, I think that, you know, we could all discuss appropriation of culture and the lack of, like, right. we all know, we all know that for, that there's talent everywhere, you know, and not everyone has an opportunity or the access or the funding. So I think we all just need to, to take that humility and just remember that as we work forward and, and nurture and, and tell people rise up, rise up, you know. Um, Good for you. Because Wonderful. everyone's, every voice is, I think, you know, I read this and I'm a big podcast listener. So um, I tend what? to read books. I love podcasts. Oh, I do too. I also love audio books. But I, oh, I'm in the car a lot because I don't want to fly. If I don't, if I can drive it, I won't. I'll drive it. I won't fly it. And I've been listening to to audiobooks. So I get and I lo I do love podcasts. I really do. I I understand. What kind of podcast do you like? I love. Well, I love probably all the popular ones. And you know, Armchair Expert with Dak Shepard and you know the whole banter with him and Monica. I love. Um, but I I just kind of come across Elizabeth Gilbert again with magic lessons, and I know these are like oh, I, I get to it. everything. I love it. I get everything. Magic lessons. Way yes, magic you know, lessons like, because she wrote 
Yeah. Know, like, because oh, she wrote, I love it. <laughs> she wrote Big Magic and in there she discusses creativity. And, and one of the things that I think after she wrote Eat, Pray, Love and like what she d- discusses is that and she holds, she thinks this is, she says this and I, I, I kind of think it's true that we're all creative. Oh, Everybody. you sound like you sound like one of my so, idols who 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 <laughs> tragically died last August, oh. Sir Ken Robinson, and his his TED talk on creativity and blessing creativity is still the most viewed TED talk in the history of the TED organization. <clears throat> Sir Ken Robinson, ladies and gentlemen, if you if you haven't seen this, go to TED.com. Anyway, that's 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 the, my kind of podcast that I I love. I, for, I went for a while in, in COVID. I said, okay, I'm finally going to do it. I'm going to listen to at least one, if not two, TED Talks every day. And, and I got oh. pretty good for a while, but, but, and I still look at them a lot in various, it's, I think it's a wonderful organization, but exactly the same. Look, I think what we should, let's take a, a little pause. I got a couple of other questions I want to drill down on. Um, but I think it's time to do some screen sharing. I have to push all the right buttons here. I'm very <clears throat> congested this evening. I probably have cleared my throat. Now, the next thing you're going to see is Eileen Perez, her home page of her beautiful website built by an extraordinary company called Lenny's Studio. Who are those mm-hmm. people, I wonder? Um, anyway, this is, uh, is that what you're seeing? Are you seeing the website? What I also want to do... <laughs> Right. Here is here. Now we're on. <clears throat> I'm on. Um, I'm on the Idajo in our browsers. I just want to move the browser over a little bit. So I, well, whatever. Mind. This is the great Scott. What a what a wonderful title. What a wonderful story. Uh, this is on your records. If, if and I've got a couple of things up here. But what I really wanted, I thought we would just have a quick listen. Here's a beautiful page on Idajo. I love to show people how to do playlists. So if you're listening to, we're going to go down and listen to Eileen here doing her poem d'un jour with Ian Bernstein. Where did you meet Ian? I was a little surprised to see him show up on the record. He's a wonderful pianist and a wonderful partner. Where did where did how did you meet? How did you connect? So this beautiful album. Um, was created by the great patron Ian Rosenblatt or Rosenblatt recital series. That was one of my um, questions coming. Okay, go on, tie it all together. Mm-hmm. So Ian had invited me to debut on his recital series, and what that recital series was was basically a London debut for artists that you know hadn't yet been at Covent Garden or Ian or wow. or at Glyndebourne. Wow. So. He had his ear to the ground through uh, Cardiff Singer of the World. He would gift uh, one of the prizes was to win, I think, some money or a recital opportunity on his series. And he just had, well, he and his amazing, also um, uh, philanthropic, iconic wife, Emma McCain, <laughs> they still... Um, in fact, right now they created a, a Rosenblatt recital artist, um, a, a private recital to support the, the foundation called Target Ovarian Cancer. So they're very philanthropic. They love opera singers. They love opera. And um, this is a baby that he created basically to give me this Fantastic. opportunity to record with Ian Burnside. Yeah. Well, he's made so many wonderful recordings. If we were to put him in here, it'd be fantastic. What I want to show everybody a little bit is that, look, this is a wonderful record. I'm, I'm pretty sure this is going to work. This, These ellipse over here, you can add to a playlist. So you can just put on playlist and you can create a playlist and we'll call it Eileen. And, and you know, boom, you've got that. And that song is going to be in your playlist. And that instantaneously goes with you on your iPad and your iPhone. And, and if you... Click that. There's that track you've saved, and it's really quite wonderful. We're going to go back to 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 Eileen here someplace. Hang on, hang on. Eh, we're going to go back to here. We go. Pomme de jour. right? So you can make yourself up, and it goes on your iPhone, your iPad, your computer, whatever you're going to use it for. It's a fantastic way. This opens up a little bit more information. This I hope this works this time. It's quite fun. If we play this, if I click on this, what happens? Oh, that didn't work. Ah, uh, how, mm. how disappointing. Uh, let me go back. But look at all those details. It tells you like everything about the song. It's, oh, yeah, it's, it's fantastic. Delicious. I love it. But I'm, I'm quite sure that Lurie Skies has a recording. So if we play it from here, mm-hmm. there should be 
I don't know what I don't know what it triggers it, but but very often what will happen on the right side is every other recording of that piece in the database. This might be a little too new to be hooked up like that, maybe. But for instance, if you're listening to Mahler one and you and you do this and you start from this, it'll show you every other recording in the database of Mahler one. It's a wonderful way to lose yourself on a rainy Sunday afternoon and just walk through. Um, I, I happen to love I do this that song. too. I do that too. With do you do that? Fantastic. I mean, it's really quite, what, what you know what, what you know what someone would notice on this actually if they play Ludic skis um they might notice that if you I don't know if then suddenly Victoria dos Angeles Ludic skis comes up that I sang it in the lower key Ian Burnside thought you know what try it in this lower key and let's see how it goes because it's more it's it's the original key and and i tried it and it was it was so beautiful to sing it in that key well I, we can I, I would love to drop the needle on something but i was thinking might it be more fun to drop on i mean obrador is not going to be so known turina somebody brought me a song to coach them on turina uh uh vado something uh, mm. i looked at it it was really quite interesting i did not know this composer wonderful composer um, of course, Forêt, you can't go wrong, and Massenet, and a lot of Han, and Defy, of course, is really wonderful. What should we have a listen to? I just want everybody to hear you. What do you like? What, oh, my you, gosh. You my you favorite? Choose. Yeah. Uh, That'd be good. I think I think Defy, Jota, is one of the happiest, beautiful, clean, Fantastic. like, way to, first song to put on when you're going to make breakfast for Here your loved one. Like that's, Here we go. That's a great breakfast song. This is a this is a feel good moment. I'm gonna let it play. It's probably gonna be a couple of minutes long. Wait, 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 wait. Oh. Wait, can I tell them about it? Oh yeah, hang on. <laughs> I don't know why it's not stopping. Stop. There we are. Yes. Do tell us about okay. it. Okay. <laughs> Just briefly, my interpretation of this song is that the pianist is my lover. And I'm saying in the text, like, so everybody says that we don't like each other, that we just kind of do this thing. And then only we know the truth. So nobody knows that we're, you know, lovers. And that's kind of the secret that I keep in the song. But I just think it makes the whole relationship, of course, <laughs> just a little more exciting to story tell. Uh, well, this, this for, is now definitely, presenting. definitely piqued our ears. This is going to be a three minute song. Should we listen to it all? Go for it, sure. All right, let's have a nice listen. Three minutes of music, ladies and gentlemen. Enjoy. Thank you. 
Oh, wow. Delicious. Well done. <clears throat> that's absolutely wonderful. Ladies and gentlemen, if there's a reason to go to Idajo, it's certainly, well, that's certainly a good one now to go tonight. <laughs> anyway, well done, sweetheart. That's, you know, that's, wow. uh, I, I say, I, I was going to go cringe. I was going to cringe, but then I was like, oh, look, it's just, it was so long ago. And it's just, I can't even believe. Do you find that when you record and you let it go and then you you come back to hear something, it's just like it's so not you. It's just oh, it's torture. It's, it's torture. So cool. <laughs> the, the the most incompetent thing I've done my whole career is edit my own recordings because I <gasps> I just wanted to do it. I wanted to get it done. I wanted to do it as quickly and as right as possible and keeps and you know editors need to do what they do and so forth. I wasn't. I I. I should have paid more attention sometimes, but never mind. That's not this conversation. I was going to say I was in Granada about a year ago, a little over a year ago, and did a concert there um, uh, with with Pablo Herrera's Casada. Oops! Uh -huh. Oh, you still there? Oh, I'm there here. we go. Right. And Defia's house. He lived there, and I went to his house and his and his studio. I mean, he was a very small man. And mm. I mean, I, I felt like an absolute elephant going around this apartment. <laughs> and but you could, you know, all of his stuff was there. His clothes were there. His table was there. Meticulous writing tools. His, he loved to cook. But, you know, in that corner, it was it was extraordinary. But, you know, you could see you could see these wonderful cedars and, and, and these and the hills outside of Granada. Of course, it's just under the, the great mammoth hill of the Alhambra which was, wow. you know, amazingly and powerful. What I hadn't realized was Washington Irving, the great 19th century American author, and his relation to, to, to Granada. And he was actually ambassador for a while and wrote there and so forth. I mean, you know, that was a Hemingway connection. I mean, it was, it was kind wow. of a weekend of, of, of heavy duty historical emotion. Look, tell me something before we go. Tell me something. Tell me when I look at your when I look at your I mean, list of awards and things and it's, it's really fun and Richard Tucker jumps out and, you know, everything we've talked about. But also a new organization, at least it, it's somewhat new and it certainly attention has got new. And that's the Sphinx organization. And the Sphinx Medal of Excellence is a is a significant prize. Um, I mean, they're a wonderful organization and they're quite focused on multi-ethnic young artists. Is that not true? That is, that is. And they're actually in support of Black and Latinx uh, young artists in the classical world. So right. they are uh, incredibly active in this period, building support and programs, even a two-year degree right now uh, for people who would like to be uh, learn about arts administration and they can take a course and um, find the support and then connections there to, to carry their education along and to make changes in, in this industry. Um, I think that having a focus like Sphinx has is so important. Um, and it's, it's, it's very astounding. <laughs> it's, um, as we all know, all of the racial inequality and the tensions have erupted in such a painful, obvious uh, way in the States. Um, probably the most that we've ever seen and couldn't, you know, no one could not look away, right? So um, to have an institution like Sphinx building and affording uh, these opportunities, it, it, it's everything. It means so much. And, exactly. and I really think that, I think that that great effort has to stand and stay and that advocates at every administrative level need to realize and kind of, you know, take a real look at a real, um, be honest about uh, the places they audition uh, tuition fees, even for our application fees, you know, is that putting a certain uh, artist or economic, Absolutely. socioeconomic group at, Absolutely. you know, and, and not a level playing field. So that's, that's they, why it's so important. Do they work with, or, or is this completely separate, the Upper Latino America Eshena Emerging Artist Program? Is that something completely different? It's completely different. Yeah. Uh, but but that's, I've, something you I've work, had, that's something you're very involved in, I understand. 
Well, I, I would like to be more involved in, uh, oh. but no, my, my colleague, uh, Maria. Be careful Tatarava what venue is, you say things like that in. You know, you're going to get oh, no, 65. No, so you'd like to be more involved. Great, <laughs> but you know what's so great is that I would love to be a part of that. And I think that that is, it's great to mention all of these wonderful uh, programs that are that are in a sense of flow. If anything again, that I've learned from this time period is we have to go with the flow and, and find the ways to make an impact and, and to connect with one another is the best way. It really is right. the best way to have that willingness. So thank you for mentioning those, those organizations. Do you like to teach? It turns out, yes. I mean, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love teaching. Um, I don't, uh, one of the reasons I've hesitated to uh, devote myself just to teaching uh, is because I've had great teachers that uh, exemplified to me the kind of contact it takes to really right. set right. the foundation up very well and proficiently. Um, I think that traveling and, and in a sense, the digital world and doing things online has shown me there is a great possibility. And so I'm working right now with Vincero Academy. Over the summer, mm -hmm. uh, a friend of mine worked on a program called Dandelion Opera. We might do that again next year. We might do it for, you know, it, there are more people creating um, two week programs to, to three month programs, to role prep, to do all of the things that you would be able to do in a university setting. Um, but perhaps don't have a way to get to class now or don't have the funds. Right. And, and so that's, that's really amazing. I think that's, that's part Fantastic. of the access. And, and it's also, I think, as I know that you're so active with this, but as, um, as a professional, it's like, uh, I need, um, there's something, you know, back to that whole feeling of feeling separated out somehow like I like being part of a of thinking about this craft also as a sport and one of the ways that um I like knowing you know what is a zoom audition today what is that going to look like and how mm. can I help mm. young artists get mm. ready for that because not only now do they have to sing real language presentation but now they have to do it into a camera how do you how, do, how can we help them exactly. and also for the people listening how can we help them um be more educated about you know looking long term for these young artists and and not just trying to you know it, it's it's a lot of work on all ends uh but i think teaching has been uh, a very important revelation to me i i didn't realize how much i could help straight away and that the helping elements can be um either as succinct and as foundational as, as possible, um, and yet serve us all for so right. long. Uh, and and I think that again, I think that's why I um, am so uh, invigorated by all of these wonderful programs coming up. Um, and it's a time where, because of the theaters that are shut down, many many professional artists and great coaches, pianists, uh, instrumentalists teaching right now is one of the ways that we can keep uh earning uh mm -hmm. money and also serving so i i think that hopefully also the lovers of, of idagio will will consider those elements what's as well. next what's next why are you in berlin and when do you go home i'm where is where is home is new york home chicago is home ah chicago's home okay yeah. you're going home for christmas uh, I'm not. I'll no. be home for Christmas. <laughs> you can count on me. <laughs> Please have snow. Oh, and mistletoe <laughs> and presents on the tree. Oh, the oh best. gosh. Yeah, exactly. It's a tough song to sing, you know, because oh. if you're not at home, you know, it's amazing. So you're not going right. to make it home for Christmas. I'm not going to be at home for Christmas. My boyfriend is actually starting work in Paris in the new year. So we're trying to figure out, you know, with all of the quarantine rules and all these things that are happening that to take into consideration when we travel. 
You know, um, I don't. I don't think it's a it, good yeah. idea to be in a plane for eleven hours. <laughs> Hello. It's, it's just. It's just not the time for that. I mean, my mother turned ninety, and I couldn't go. I said, and she didn't want me to go. She was very sweet. She said, oh, "If you get over here, I'll bang her on the head." You know, and I mean, she doesn't talk like that, but, but it was just impossible. But you know, Fauci's right. I mean, airplane travel should be an absolute necessity if you can avoid it. Don't and any long-term flights right now is just a bad idea. And America is just in a real tough time, and so you probably best you know bunkering in for the while i'm, I'm glad to hear that but you're gonna so you're gonna is he meeting you in, in berlin you guys are meet or you, we're, are you singing, we're like are you singing in berlin uh we're tbd for right now and um my okay. next i'm gonna do a montag stück for the beautiful bayerische staatsoper um okay. we were we were you know bohem was supposed to happen and so i yeah, think that everything they figured out a way to um uh kind of reshuffle and and have have us with uh with them for for this uh beautiful Saint-Saëns oratorio uh, All right. Noel. Um and then yeah, a couple of concerts and then that's <laughs> and TBD 2021 TBD. The TBD um, is what's happening. But you I know mean, what? I, it, there's some new rules it, coming up in the next couple of days, you know. Everybody's waiting yeah, for the next shoe to drop. Zurich, yeah, we're all, ugh. you know what, everybody hang in there and exactly. stay healthy. And I don't know if it's been helpful for you, but really, I think music does heal. And I think that listening to music and finding ways to support your artists, um, it's just the best way to just continue forward and keep this Keep keep the good vibes going. It's it's definitely a very challenging time. Book, books are not a bad thing. <laughs> I've had yeah. more time in my I've had more time in my library over the last seven months. I'm I, I I I tend to describe myself as extremely busy, and completely revenue free. <laughs> <laughs> so you know look darling eileen you're wonderful thanks for the thanks for joining me thanks for being on idajo thanks for Thank what you do you, you said you said uh, you had a little bit back you said something about you know thought about teaching i should maybe do that the whole time that's nonsense you should know that every time you walk out there as you and you open your mouth and you sing you are also teaching you are also mm -hmm. showing not just your young colleagues Everybody, you've got such a wonderful communicative spirit. People love to listen to you. You have a beautiful voice. You're engaging and captivating. You're you're one of the bright lights of our singing time right now. So just sing like the bird you are, darling. And wow. we'll I'll catch you on the rebound. Thanks, Tom. Thank See you, you. soon. Thank you, everybody, ladies and gentlemen. Hang yeah. on, we'll just say we'll just say goodbye, and and I'll see you all on Tuesday for Song and Beyond. We're having a wonderful roundtable of of people that have joined me before next Tuesday on the on the on the Hampson Foundation Song and Beyond series for Idaja. We're going to have a, three or four of the wonderful scholars we've had that have written shows for me and so forth, and have a a wrap up time for Christmas. So do join us on Tuesday. Uh, next Thursday, I have no idea. But it'll be somebody wonderful, <laughs> just like we had tonight. Thank you, everybody.